everyone and welcome back to Oatmeal. Oh, are you new? Welcome. Nice to meet you. Um, so as we enter our third year in the pandemic, I've noticed that I haven't really talked about my actual like what what I what I do, um, what my profession I guess um, on here. And so I wanted to take a little bit of time to talk about the pandemic and language change because. I'm, I'm a linguist and sometimes I forget that, so I want to talk about it more on the internet. Um, so these are just some areas that the pandemic is um, fueling language change um, and some things I think are interesting. Um, so number one is phonological reduction. You see this all the time, it's one of the most common forms of language change. And you see this with a lot of the phrases that have entered our lexicon um, since because of the pandemic. Um, for instance, social distancing. Very rarely do people pronounce every single one of the syllables completely correctly um, now. Whereas in the beginning, I think we mostly did and we were still finding our step with them. Um, now you really only hear it pronounced all fully what are you doing? Um, by like politicians and you know very professional standard places where speaking with a certain amount of dictation or of diction is um, expected but now it's social distancing like you don't pronounce most of that um, yeah and this goes for other phrases as well um, phonological reduction is super common Next, we have semantic perjuration. This means when a word or a phrase, um, the meaning becomes more negative than it was before. Um, and you see this with, um, one example is the word mask. Like, mask has become, like, not just, um, more negative in the association, like, oh man, gotta wear mask again, um, but also more polarizing um because you know i'm still wearing masks out even boosted and blasted but uh a lot of folks aren't and that is a, a dividing factor the other thing you see with the word mask is this one actually does bother me is i never know whether people will when, when i say the word mask whether people will assume i'm talking about like a covid face mask or like skincare masks and so i feel like i have to specify with skincare, but not with um, face masks, like COVID face masks. Yeah, I mean, unless it's like a specific kind of mask, like you can specify surgical masks, you can specify N95, but if it's just like a fabric mask, that's what's generally assumed to be meant by mask right now, and you have to specify if it's other than that. And that gets frustrating because I do a lot of skincare masks, and I'm talking about like, oh, I got a mask on right now, people will be like, so what? Um, I don't know if that's like a real fear. I don't know if people have actually been confused or figured out with context clues, but that is, <laughs> that's a thing that we have to think about now. Uh, all right. And third, um, this isn't new. This isn't necessarily related to linguistics, but it is a linguistic style. And that's like the, the empty promises and the ways that people like in power talk about the pandemic and the the coded language around that um it's not it's not new but it is a big deal in the pandemic right now um like the way people talk about like only however many people with however many comorbidities and then when you think about what like the meaning of those words actually is it's like that's that's not a good thing why are you framing it like a good thing um so that's not new but i think it is Maybe people are noticing it more, or I'm noticing people notice it more than before the pandemic. Um, and so going along with that is other kinds of coded speech, um, like calling it a panini or other words that start with P and um, just generally using other words, but there is a common understanding. No one, no one is confused. No one thinks we're actually in a panini sandwich. Um, I don't think they do, 
maybe some children, but like even I get the subtext there. So that is, I think, going to continue and um, grow, um, as well as other examples, not just Panini. People have coded language to talk about all sorts of things, but um, there's a lot of common understanding of the language, the coded language that has developed around the pandemic. Um, and lastly, this one is huge and, well, the pandemic alone didn't cause this, but it definitely exacerbated it, and that is um, the differences between online versus face-to-face -face communication, how that works for people, how that is changing things, um, what does that say about body language, because like, you only see me from here up, you know? Um, and I mean, I don't know if my legs have a lot to do with body language, but in general, especially with um, what online communication that doesn't involve video, like phone or like, like voice uh, messaging and texting, it's not that you're missing out on communication, but it is different and that's going to have a lasting impact. Um, and so of course this transition was easier for folks like myself who already did a lot of communication online but now it has become a larger percentage of the total amount of communication we do by a lot. Um, and that is definitely a language change that is caused by the pandemic. And I feel like, I don't know about you, but I'm definitely like in-person communication, what? Um, I'm definitely, it's not that I'm not as good at it, but it's definitely different than it was before the pandemic. And you know, we're gonna be seeing how that, what the real ramifications of that are for a while. <sighs> Yay. Um, and of course, this is, these are not the only ways that the pandemic is influencing language change and language would be changing with or without the pandemic in different ways. Um, but these are just some ones that I noticed that I think are interesting that are pretty directly related to the pandemic. Um, and of course, you know, each of these categories I could probably talk about for a while, um, but I don't want to make a super, super long video or just, you know, read this textbook to you. Although it is a very well-written textbook, actually. Um, props to Lyle. Good job, bro. Um, yeah, thanks for hanging out with me and Lancey to talk about linguistics. And I'll see you next week with another riveting video.